Here we are. We have died and gone to logic heaven. That seems to always happen. It's a great project. We're going to work on EQ, which is one of the big three areas of mixing tools that I think of. So EQ being one of them, the other being reverb and echo, things like that. Lastly, third compression. Of course, there's things like saturators and all sorts of other things, but that's the royal trifecta. So what are we going to do? EQ. So let's look at the stock EQ that comes with Logic. This is a parametric EQ. Anything below 20 hertz is pretty much below the range of human hearing or feeling. Maybe you can feel super low stuff. It's really loud. But <clears throat> I think up to about 200 or so would be considered the low. 200 is more the upper mid or upper low. I think you would refer to sub bass is like ooh, 60 and below something like that just for terminology once you're up here you're in the mid-range and they say the magic is in the mid-range with EQ that's the advanced realm eventually you understand how to get all the parts in your song that have noise in here working together and you do that by like carving out spaces for them we also want to let things be natural at the right times. And then I think above like 4K, you'd say you're in the highs. 2K, 3K, that's more upper mid range. So there's a lot you can do with an EQ. It's super versatile as a tool. It can be used to perform regular duties, uh, Kind of like janitorial stuff, cleaning things up. Um, this is what you'd call low cut. So this one has a bunch of potential bands that you can work with. You see that they highlight like that. They don't have the low cut or the high cut actually out yet, which is why it's muted. Let's put an actual good solid low cut. So this thing um, is different than this, which has the bell shape. This one goes straight to the bottom no matter what. So you can change the, the gradation, and then you can give it a little bump. Um, this is a great tool for just taking out dead space. So you might not even really change the character of the sound barely at all. Um, but it's good just to cut this out. And what an EQ is doing is reducing or amplifying the signal just like a fader, it's identical, except for one thing, which is that you're able to specify where in the frequency spectrum, or over 20K is like dog hearing. So in the human hearing spectrum, which is this, which things you want to amplify or reduce. So right now we're boosting a little bit. Um, you would say by, looks about 2 dB. 2 dB, this is negative, 11.2 dB, so those are the same. And then we're cutting everything out pretty much below um, 55 here. And this is all like drastically reduced, which means if you have signal coming in, um, Can record myself right now just to have signal coming in la 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 that's enough i don't really want this to play So we can see this thing. Man, that is too loud for me. <clears throat> All right, back to business. 
we got this low cut and as we drag it up we see it'll start to actually affect what's going on you can see the waves sort of morphing but if you want to do something like this um, which is barely reducing a little bit over here <clears throat> but barely you do even do less um, it's still good to get rid of that noise on a lot of instruments that aren't using this space uh, this area can get clogged up pretty easily uh, by instruments that don't necessarily need the space but one thing to keep in mind is that these lows do in fact work with the highs it's not simple EQ is not as simple as <clears throat> oh I want to you know this is a high-pitched based instrument therefore I don't need these lower frequencies quite the contrary I watched a video where a guy had a guitar the guitar was playing low parts and he um, I think along with a low cut he actually like reduced stuff around 200 just to give it a little breathing room because it was sounding a little chunky uh, with the rhythm but then the guitar started doing a higher pitch thing and he noticed that it was sounding a little bit kind of thin and the problem was that this low cut that he'd done to help with the rhythm section was taking away from the quality of the higher part. So even though the guitar was like living more up in here, these lower frequencies being taken away were damaging. And when he turned, uh, I think he even boosted a little bit, it, oh my God, just like changed everything, made the, the lead guitar sound like more rich, more full. So it's EQ is very complicated. You can do so much with it and you can do so much damage and the way in which you use EQ um, should really be intentional otherwise you're just playing around so what you wanna have as a plan you wanna hear something that you don't like or you wanna emphasize or change go in with a plan so we'll start to look at other EQs as well let's add we'll go off these stock ones and just look at other styles because this is a parametric EQ this is the basic one that Logic has decided should always be available but let's look at some of these vintage like a, a tube EQ like this so this thing is doing a lot of the same things but we have no visual information for one thing and this is like really modeling a piece of old hardware but let's see can we have them both open yeah no why not I want them both open that's annoying but you have things like drive you can make it silky punchy too it's more like so these things have qualities that's the other thing is that what this is essentially modeling is hardware like um weirdness that makes it sound cool trying to make it sound more analog because this is sort of modeling analog gear uh, so we have like switches like this and low boost or attenuate which means reduction and you're picking a frequency uh, so this one has like a sliding scale some things literally just jump from one to the other they're not even giving you much to work with and that's sort of the point is that we kind of get excited by these graphic EQs but so often you don't want to get excited by EQ you just want to get in and do a couple things that make sense and a lot of people in mixing talk about using one tool to do maybe one or two things and if you want to do something else to the sound later on, use a different tool. Like, keep adding things. It's okay to use a lot of plugins. Don't go to excess, but like, if you have two different things to do, maybe consider doing them on two different things so that you're really focusing on one job and you're not just turning a bunch of knobs at random. That will never work. So, low frequencies, high frequencies, especially 1K. 1000 4k all the way up to 16 which is like you know the real bright range 
attenuate, boost, high bandwidth. See, I'm not. You never know. Everything, just like pieces of hardware, each thing has different functions. They could have not having a driven thing, but they did. Alright, let's open this up again. Like, what else can we do with EQ? So, every sound is a collection of frequencies. There's overtones. But the timbre, i.e. the color, the quality of sounds, what makes a violin sound like a violin, what makes a guitar sound like a guitar, <clears throat> those really come down to the way the frequencies, because every sound is really just a frequency being oscillated, which is what a synthesizer is mimicking. That's just a computer oscillating a sound wave on its own. In the real world, you do that through vibrations in the air. There's no sound in space. So, given that the timbres really come down, comes down to a bunch of frequencies, an EQ can do a lot to change the color of something. This is why you would probably EQ much more conservatively if you're recording like a much more open, folky sounding record that you want to sound natural. You want the guitar to breathe and you want the guitar to sound a lot like a guitar. Now there are still reasons why <clears throat> through the recording process you might not love everything about that guitar sound, but you would be going in with an EQ with the idea that you're going to maybe do a few jobs to bring out the best in the sound, but knowing that the more you do, the more you boost the more you cut, the tighter a th uh, uh, um, range you have. I'm sort of doing this with my two fingers on the keyboard. I'm sure there's another way. Um, but when you do it tighter, you're making the sound less natural. So there's sometimes a reason why you might really want to boost something like this. That's not generally what you're doing with an EQ. So we have a low cut. <clears throat> which is something fairly standard. High cuts function similarly but but differently and I've really become a fan of high cuts recently. There's so much you, you can do with them. There's like a reduction in sparkle that people will probably mention with a high cut. I like to think of it as placing the sound source differently. You can use a high cut to make the listener feel like it's affected in a way spatially. I'll explain. High pitch frequencies, uh, they travel, but they can be delicate. So <clears throat> I tend to think of the highest frequencies as having a proximity element to them and that if you're picking up on a lot of those it's often because something is close and this is why something harsh for instance is often like a close source it's harder for something to sound harsh it has to be really loud if it's far away for that to travel as well these high pitch frequencies uh, they die a lot quicker when there's a surface in between you and whoever is listening. So if you're making high-pitched noise and then doing it through your hands, you get this reduction basically in high-pitched frequencies when I put my hand over my mouth. You can still tell it's me, it sounds like me, but there's just like some sparkle gone from the sound. That's because with my hand gone, those high-pitched frequencies are now coming to you again so it's sometimes hard to, ch you know, translate this exactly to music because music is kind of a place, especially in mixing of like tricks, you can use a lot of these techniques to like give the impressions of things. Doesn't necessarily mean that you're like trying to make something sound like it's, you know, coming from a closet. 
um, but in small amounts or in greater amounts, you can do a lot of cool things with high cuts. Um, it's a great thing to automate. So in a lot of electronic music, um, let's say they, they want to have like a buildup, they'll have maybe the volume automate as well, so it'll start quieter, and then the automation will bring this up, 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 and it's like But another thing to do is on a part or two, a key part or two, put a high cut in, and you'll get this kind of muted sound. See what I mean? Take that away and automate this across, and you can totally do that in Logic or anything else. Um, we'll get to that in automation. You can absolutely have this curve swoop in. Another cool thing is to like do a bell like this and have it sweep across. You get this like whooshing sweepiness. Um, so there's like playful things you can do with an EQ that people like, etc. Um, it's good to know what these frequencies all mean, and I'm still, you know, getting there really. Um, but the sub bass area really does matter. Kick and bass, kick, um, drum, and bass of some sort, bass things, um, have to inhabit this space, and it's good to know how to get them to not conflict. There's a technique called sidechain compression, um, which we'll show and get into in another video. You can use that on a kick and bass uh, to sort of build a healthy relationship. You're usually suppressing the bass while the kick is in just for a quick split second so that you don't get this kind of muddy clash. Um, but the other thing you can do is EQ them in such a way that you sort of decide which one is going to be really low and which one's going to be sort of low. Very low. Really low. Very low. Really low. Okay. You get the idea. And different music will choose to go in different order. I think often, like hip hop, will put the kick um, lower, I believe. But anyway, you can, every song's different. You find a way. Um, you know, there's so much just on a bass with EQ, you might decide to do more of a low cutty thing. Because you just kind of want to hear, um, like, let's pretend this is a bass, even though it's sort of more mid rangey. Um, but you'd be like, well, we definitely don't really need this low cut anymore. And might even do this. But sometimes I'll be like, I really don't want that, uh, the low, 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 low. Because the song just doesn't need the mud. Um, but like, boost somewhere in here, just a little bit, like, just a little bit. Uh, you never know, maybe pull something down, get the sound will be more coming from here. And with the high cut, you're sort of saying, no, I don't need any of this. Even though the bass will have some frequencies that kind of scatter up into the higher places. And by emphasis, like allowing that, um, those to come through or even boosting a little bit, that, you know, is certainly a sound with bass, like, uh, um, you think of like grunge bass or something tends to be not very warm. It's more mid rangey, more trebly. Um, totally fine. You might still have the main artifact down here, but a lot of the sound is up here, and you know you can get that some sparkle on a bass. That's why EQ is such a dynamic thing. Uh, I think that's probably enough for now. 2K is like a telephone sound, evidently. They call it the telephone frequency. So that kind of nasally, um, you record yourself and then you boost this. And, uh, you know, you could even automate that so that you're like boosting 2K so it sounds, you get that kind of poppy, um, you get the idea. You'll hear it when you try it and then automate it away and bring in, you know, with the vocal in the main place. Might even reduce some people like to make a, a cut in a place or two. Um, I think it's completely legit never to use a parametric EQ, by the way, to just use knob ones, use your ears. Um, truth is, if you 
the better you record something, uh, the better. And EQ is, some people really like to go nuts with it to do cool things. But if you're just trying to make something sound better and bring out the best in something, if you're EQing the crap out of it, there's something wrong. You should probably re-record. Mm, on that note, uh, yeah, I think um, that's a good overview of EQ. Um, but there's much more you can do to affect sound. Uh, there's things called multiband compressors, which combine an EQ and a compressor so that you can compress things at particular frequencies called multiband because it'll have various bands along the EQ spectrum and then you can decide how much to compress in each area. You might do that on single instruments, single tracks, or it's something I think a lot of people like to do on the mix bus if they're really into that. Some people swear by multiband compressors and I, I kind of get why but I don't really use them yet. It's a journey. All right. Goodbye.